Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I have a book haul to share with you. I have a very large number of books. This has been accumulated over a good chunk of time, but I uh, also have a new bookshelf, different video. We'll get there eventually. But first I'm going to share with you all the books that I have gathered. I'm going to move this out of the shot because I talk with my hands and I don't want it to fall over. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to turn my mic on, but at least I didn't get too far. First book I'm going to start with is Upstream Color, not Upstream Color, there's a movie I watch called Upstream Color and every time I think of it, Upstream by Mary Oliver. This is a collection of essays that is very nature-based and focuses on like meditation and writing and nature and kind of like finding yourself within that place. If there's ever a book I've needed the last year, this one. Super relevant for me. Um, next one is one I'm, I'm reading. I started, I think I might start over because it's been a week or two since I had it picked up. It's called The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I feel like everyone already knows about this book, but in case you don't, but the summary goes, under the influence of their charismatic classic professor, a group of clever eccentric misfits and an elite New England college discover a way of thinking and living that is a world away from the humdrum existence of their contemporaries. And then it kind of go it gets darker. They slip into obsession and corruption and betrayal and evil and... The writing of this is beautiful. I won't do this for all the books. Where the sky is dark over the shivering apple blossoms and the first chill of snow that will fall that night is already in the air. How beautiful. Come on. Awesome. Um, this is one that I loved. I've already read it. I haven't reviewed I just like forgot how to review. I'll get into the swing of it. I will eventually at least review this one because I extra extra loved it. And it is called Mr. Salary by Sally Rooney. Same Sally Rooney who did Normal People. This is like 30 pages. Honestly, I... I, th I liked it more than normal people. Like, it hooked me in a different way. I get, don't go into it thinking that they're going to be the same thing or they compare in any way because they really don't. They're so different. Right, summary. I don't want to give you much of one because it's so short, but th there's just a very interesting relationship dynamic, which, like, I think is her forte, Sally Rooney's. Years ago, Suki moved in with Nathan because her mother was dead and her father was difficult and she had nowhere else to go. Now they are on the brink of the inevitable. Super brief but it's a short one. If you like her stuff, definitely read it. Super worth it. Um, an old one. This is like uh, 1953 and it's just so cool looking and it's actually a movie cover of the Dr. Zhivago book movie. I didn't know they did them that far back. I thought this was like a, I don't know, when Twilight started thing <laughs> that they did. I don't really want to read the summary to this because I want to go into a blind, but I feel like everyone's heard about Dr. Zhivago. Um, speaking of Sally Rooney, I did buy Normal People. I did really enjoy it. I don't necessarily think it's everybody. Like, the writing, while is very good, is very different in a way that it's hard to, it's hard to get into the rhythm with, but, um, I still do recommend it for people who are interested. Yeah, it's odd. If you haven't heard of it, gosh, I'm so sorry for the rock you've been living under. <laughs> so it follows, um, these two Irish teens, the impact that they have on each other's lives in, I don't want to necessarily say childhood, but like in their teen years. And then that relationship and its impact on who they became as people, how they behave and yeah. how they yeah. view relationships, how they cope with conflict. It's just a book on how different people in your life affect you. It's such an interesting character study. But speaking fun. of characters that I just love, uh, the Bronze Horseman series by Paulina Simons. This is the old version of the second Shit. book. Um, but this is something I wanted a long time ago and I was really, really happy to have found it because it's just one of those older edition things and they changed the title and it's just, oh, it's so prized to me. Because it's a sequel, I won't tell you a summary. Um, and this is one of the first editions of the Bronze Horseman and it's like embarrassing. I have so many copies of this book, but this one was really pretty. I love it. I have a review for this and I'm going to re-review them. So I'm not going to tell you much of a summary. Um, if you're interested, I do have a poster, a poster five probably on Instagram where you can read more of my thoughts. I love this series. It's, it's my favorite series. I can safely say that easily. My favorite series, if not favorite book. If you've been here, you've heard. This is a brief one. It's a collection of stories by Franz Kafka. It's uh, one of those things that has always been kind of intimidating to me, but I've wanted to at least give a shot. I majored in philosophy. I feel like I have to read it, but not in like an obligatory way, but just like in a, a mind enrichment kind of way. Anyway, giving that a shot. There's a couple more kind of in that category that I'll zoom through quickly because I know it's not most people's taste. Um, Albert Camus, I think is how you say it. The Stranger. 
like, again, philosophy. I, I had this, <laughs> this whole thing where I want enriching novels that make you think and consider things in different lights. And I picked it up. I feel like it's a nutritious, a nutritious book. Also a nutritious book. This is one that I've had on my list to read since like 2015 or so. It is uh, Dostoevsky's Notes from the Underground. And it's the Parvar Volonsky Vla translation which I think I got, no, I did not get their translation of War and Peace, which is next. That last one was supposed to be very dark and probably the one before that too. <laughs> and now I have War and Peace, this massive thing. I researched a lot on which version I wanted to get. There are different translations. Um, it's based in St. Petersburg in about 1805. That's in Russia, if you don't know. And it is right before um, Napoleon's invasion. And it tells multiple different stories and they're very interwoven. Like you need like a character tree to keep track of things and you will probably tab and bookmark and make notes all throughout the book just to keep track of it all. Very intimidating, but it's something I want to definitely read this year. Quickly going to talk about Sally Rooney's conversations with friends. Once I read Normal People, I was like, okay, I want everything. Um, this one follows a 21-year-old cool-headed observant student called Frances from Dublin, who's an aspiring writer at night and she performs spoken word poetry with her best friend, Bobby. Um, who used to be her girlfriend. So again, that relationship complication thing she just excels with. Um, and then they befriend this well-known journalist who's married to Nick, an actor, and then they enter a world of beautiful houses, raucous dinners, um, parties in Brittany and France. And yeah, it, it just sounds like r really interesting character dynamics, uh, really far away from what I normally read. And I just like reading different things every now and then. This one was a gift. This one is The Tenant of Wildfield Hall. I always want to call it Winfield Hall. I might do that here. Sorry if I do. Uh, this is by Anne Bronte and it follows... Oh, that's actually a beautiful summary. I'm just going to tell you this. It's a powerful and sometimes violent novel of expectation, love, oppression, sin, religion, and betrayal. It portrays the disintegration of a marriage of Helen Huntington and the mysterious tenant of the title and her dissolute alcoholic husband. Defying convention, Helen leaves her husband to protect their young son from their father's influence and earns her own living as an artist. So, super feminist novel. Right up my alley. Uh, remember how I was talking about how I really like Paulina Simons? I'm going to eventually start this other series of hers. I, I need her back in my life. So I picked this up. I'm sorry. I really don't want to read the summary for it. I want to go in blind because I'm really excited about that one. This one I hesitantly mentioned because I have a feeling I might have mentioned this in my last book haul. Sorry if I have, but it's A Little Life. This I heard is like going to rip your heart out kind of sad. And it follows four college classmates broke adrift and buoyed by their friendship and ambition, and they move to New York in search of fame and fortune. While their relationships, which are tinged by addiction, success, and pride, deepen over the decades, the men are held together by their devotion to the brilliant, enigmatic Jude, a man scarred by, his, by an unspeakable childhood trauma. I really do feel like I told you guys about that. Oops, sorry new one for sure I picked up and there was a big sale at Target. It's called Stories of Your Life. Wait. Yeah. Stories of Your Life and Others. And this is by Ted Chang. If you watch the movie Arrival, which I did and I kind of liked and then I rewatched it and then I loved and now like it's a frequent rewatch for me. Oh, it's so interesting. It was based off of a story within this. So this is a weird one to give a summary. This is a book haul of lots of little collections of stories and essays, not so much novels. The collection is said to deliver dual delights of very, very strange and heartbreakingly familiar, often presenting characters who must com uh, must confront sudden change, the inevitable rise of Ottomans, AI, um, and the appearance of aliens while striving to maintain some sense of normalcy. With sharp intelligence and humor, Chang examines what it means to be alive in a world marked by uncertainty, but also by beauty and wonder contemporary classic, I think they called it, which is like high praise. And speaking of someone who always has high praise, at least I've always heard this from professors and students alike through college. I know I can't say his name correctly. I'm going to get better at it. I was going to say I just can't, but no, I'm going to get better at it. Um, it's Harku Murakami, and this is Norwegian Wood. This is the one I decided to start with because it was smaller and a lot less intimidating than others I've had on my list. And I think it's just more genre-wise up my alley. We'll see. Brief uh, summary, uh, Toru, a serious young college student in Tokyo, is, is devoted, devoted to Nako, 
a beautiful and introspective young woman, but their mutual passion is marked by the tragic death of their best friend years before. As Narco retreats further into her own world, Toru finds himself drawn to a fiercely independent and sexually liberated young woman. This is one, if you like poetry, I think you would like this. I, I only read a little bit but it was enough to make me purchase a full-size copy. And I feel like this book was way too expensive. (laughs) It's described as slender, quietly smashing, a book so radiant, so sparkling, with sunlight and sorrow that it almost makes a person gasp. Can you see why I picked it up? It's really interestingly written. The way that the sentences are structured, the way that the paragraphs are even, they're just like little, little blips, like blinks of an eye in these just different moments like they don't tie together but they tie together I've heard a lot of people kind of rag on it saying it feels like a rough draft or just like a list of ideas but I'm so into that idea and it's just a different composition and the writing is really beautiful so it sold me I got another Paulina Simons book I told you I had a really big thing this one's Tully um I've heard very mixed opinions on this I really like Paulina's writing style and therefore I bought. Uh, It's said to be a powerful story of a young woman from the flat plains of Kansas. Tully's story is as embracing as the wheat fields and as sweeping as the prairies from which the drama unfolds. Okay, I have a lot of books. That's all I'm going to give you. This one was another gift. It is called Every Last Secret by A.R. Torre. This is like a, uh, I don't want to say murder mystery, but like a suspense mystery. I don't know if murder is involved. Uh, Cat Withrope. That's a fun name to say. Kat Winthrop has worked hard to get what she has. A gorgeous home, social standing, and William, her successful handsome husband. Then a friendly new couple moves into the estate next door. While cautious, a good neighbor like Kat greets them with open arms and warm hospitality. Nina Ryder is a fellow lady of leisure. A life coach with off-the-track dresses, personal issues, and a husband who hasn't delivered. She's anxious to move up in the world. This beautiful new town is a step in the right direction. It's also making Nina... I think that's how you say it. Uh, Nana more aware that she doesn't ha- what she doesn't have, namely William. So you kind of you see where this is going. It feels a little bit lifetime, but I've heard really good things about her as like a writer, her writing style. That I was giving it a shot. Maybe I should have mentioned this after Department of Speculation, which is this one. I just realized I don't think I said the name. It's by Jenny Offill. My bad. Um, Rachel Cusk's outline again very much i've heard people say that it feels like this rough draft and i'm so into that idea the only thing that i right off the bat don't like about it who the fuck formatted this (laughs) it's just like the alignment is so odd and the font is a different choice it's not times new roman but i mean it's called outline so it being an outline is it's very fitting outline is a novel of 10 conversations Spare and lucid, it follows the novelist teaching a course in creative writing over an oppressively hot summer in Athens. She leads, she leads her students in storytelling exercises. She meets other writers for dinner. She goes swimming in the Leona Sea, Eleona, um, with her seamate from the plane. The people she encounters speak about themselves, their fantasies, anxieties, pet theories, regrets, and longings. Something so that probably is more familiar that you would expect from my channel. This is something from Renee Carlino called Wish You Were Here. This follows Charlotte. Um, she is in her 20s and adrift. Did, oh, uh, searching for a spark to jumpstart her life and give her a sense of purpose. Like I said, ditto. <laughs> That's why I picked this up. I was like, oh yes, teach me things. This is me. She's had many jobs and she's had many bad relationships and now she's feeling especially lost in her less than glamorous gig at a pie and fry joint in LA where the uniforms are bad and the tips are even worse. Then she collides literally with Adam, an intriguing, handsome, and mysterious painter. The serendipitous meeting on the streets turns into a whirlwind one night stand that has Charlotte feeling enchanted by Adam's spontaneity and joy for life. There's a promise in both her wor- in both his words and actions, but in the harsh light of morning, Adam's tune changes, leaving Charlotte to wonder if her notorious luck with bad men is really just her own bad judgment. Love dynamic character development there. I can feel it happening. This is by John Jonathan Franzen. We're on a nickname basis now, me and you, John. <laughs> I read this based on a recommendation from Mikel Jolet. He recommended him as a writer, and then I went to his Goodreads and found something that looked kind of interesting to me. How to be alone. I picked it up in 2020. I just, <laughs> it felt right. Um, but it's a collection of essays. I'm not someone that reads collection of essays, collections of essays. And here I am with a bunch. This is one that I read and I loved and I have it digitally, but I loved it so much I had to have a physical copy. It is called April and Oliver by Tess Callahan. I will review this too. I'm actually rereading it now. So 
maybe soon. I hate that it's described as like a slow burn romance because that so isn't it. And there were a lot of reviews that were leaning negative because they felt misled. And I'm like, I, can, I see what you're saying. Don't read it as a slow burn romance and you'll enjoy it. The writing is marvelous, just absolutely marvelous. Like so this follows these uh, two childhood friends that they go on different paths, but then there's a, a death, kind of like a mutual death between the two. Their lives are kind of like pushed back together down a similar path for a, t for a time being. And Oliver kind of has this like savior complex, like he wants to fix, he wants to help. And April like has none wants none of that but she like needs something um, and so it's this really interesting like a tug of war between the two i feel like that may not have been the best summary i have a review for that on my instagram that is so better than what i just said so Ooh, sorry this is from a small little author i don't know if i know how to say her last name it's called space to bloom by kelly Birdsick? Did I say it was a collection of poetry? It's a collection of poetry. Um, I feel like I should read you one. All right, I just picked one at random. This one's called Walls. In truth, I used to frown upon the people who had walls up, and now here I am, walls taller than most. It's funny how life humbles you. I ache for the softness of August. You had beautiful morning eyes and the smell of coffee so delicately complimented your laughter. Yeah, it's just really pretty. And I haven't picked up poetry in a while. And I thought that one was a good one to go with. I'm sorry that this was really long. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I don't know how back I am and what capacity, but doing doing videos as I'm doing videos. So and I thank you guys for watching and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.